Hey everyone, welcome back to Garnet Reviews. Today I feel like I'm in a very privileged position where I've been invited on board the 2022 Sunseeker 65 Sports Yacht. This was on display at last year's St. Petersburg Sail and Power Boat Show, and this was arguably the flagship of the boat show itself. Boarding was easily done, you step onto this extended bathing platform, and this has actually got a tender garage, it's got a Williams 345 jet tender underneath. And this slides out onto the bathing platform. The bathing platform slides down in a diagonal fashion. It's all done in hydraulics and you're able to launch and retrieve the boat that way. As we make our way up to the aft cockpit, I love how much space there is, how wide the deck is. There's handholds and guardrails everywhere so you always feel safe and secure. And this one's got an almost L-shaped seating area in the aft cockpit, as well as having a large dining table here that backs up to a sun pad that's over the top of that tender garage. I love how you've got that extended overhang from the flybridge, it gives you great shade and protection up here. And you can spec this one out with a retractable awning as well. And although you can't see it in the video because it is in the daylight, this boat's built in with all sorts of illuminated features and it looks amazing at night. I'll leave a link in the description to Sunseeker's website, you can check out some of the photographs there. And as we go to step inside, you can drop the window down on the port hand side and on the starboard the door slides open and it just makes this a very open all-in-one area. You'll find the galley is on the port side and I like the fact that this butts right up to the aft cockpit it makes it far easier for sharing beverages and refreshments and meals for your guests. And moving forward you've then got the saloon and the dining table in here as well. And look at those massive windows, you've got almost 360 degree visibility in here. And there has to be around 7 foot headroom, something like that. I'm 6 foot 2 and I had a ton of room in here. You then have the helm to starboard. And this has got two individual seats at the helm. It's got the latest and greatest electronics. You've got multifunction display, chart plotter, radar. She's joystick controlled. You've got full engine instrumentation. And I love the way that this one's got a similar design to high performance cars. Even some of the gauges that's on here, it looks like you're sitting in a high performance car rather than sitting in a yacht. Sunseeker is a synonymous option when it comes to the James Bond movies and this one definitely feels like you're on a James Bond boat. Take a few short steps forward and this leads down into the main accommodation area. I like the solid handhold that was in place as you go down these steps. And then when you get to the bottom it's almost like you're in an atrium or a hallway. There's so much room down here. On the bow you've got a VIP stateroom. This has got an island queen berth. I like the fact that there's much access on either side. There's plenty of natural light. There's plenty of storage here as well, you can use this for extended cruising. And there's a massive TV that's also mounted on the bulkhead, so that your guests always feel like they've got relaxation and comfort in mind. And for extra privacy, this VIP stateroom is actually en suite. It's got a very large heads compartment, and I like the fact that the toilet and the shower is separate. So that way you get far more room to actually use and enjoy that shower especially if you're going to be staying on board for long periods of time. As standard, this one comes with 211 gallons of fresh water. She's got 52 gallons of black water capacity. And she's also got fuel capacity of 924 gallons. So make her way aft, you'll see here on the starboard side of the yacht, there's a twin guest cabin, which again offers great light, both natural and artificial. There's great headroom, there's storage in here. And opposite you'll find another heads compartment. This is primarily going to be your day head. Not only do I appreciate how much space that we have on this yacht, but I love the fit and finish of all the different materials. It definitely feels like I'm in a totally different league from most of the boats that I feature on this channel. And as we head aft, this will take you to the owner's stateroom. This yacht's powered by pods, so the engines sit far back on the yacht and it gives you far more space inside and that gives you the stateroom is what would normally be an engine room. The yacht boasts a beam of 16 feet 8 inches and this stateroom takes up almost the full beam and again with plenty of headroom in here. And I love those large windows on either side and they do have opening portholes if you want extra air and ventilation. There's a large smart TV mounted on the bulkhead and as you'd assume this owner's stateroom is fully en suite. And if we make our way into the head compartment itself You'll see here there's a ton of space. You've got the shower off to one side, the toilet on the other. There's a lot of mirrors in here and that helps make it feel brighter and bigger. And there's also plenty of storage for your toiletries and personal belongings. 
And as I make my way back out through, I want to point out as standard this one comes with a pair of Volvo 900 horse diesel engines. You can have it as an optional twin 1000 horse. As I said, these are IPS driven and flat out you should expect speeds of around 35 knots. But when range is more of an issue for you, if you cut that back to 10 knots, you should get around 750 nautical miles. Unfortunately, due to the amount of people that was waiting to get on board and the limited time I had at the boat show, I wasn't able to get down into the engine rooms to share that with you. As to the price point for this yacht, there's a lot of features and options that you can change on this one, so it's hard to say exactly. But ballpark, you should expect around a $3.5 million mark. And one design element that makes this one stand out from practically any other boat on the market today is the flybridge. Sunseeker actually refer to this one as the sport bridge and they say that it's got the sky helm. That's not just a market employee, this one is totally different from any other flybridge I've been on. It feels like despite being 65 foot in length, it feels like you're sitting in a sports boat when you're up here. It's a very low profile flybridge. You got a large sun pad on the aft deck this has got great storage underneath, there's drinks holders, there's handhold, and this can be raised and lowered in sections if you wanted a backrest, etc. I like the fact it's got a refrigerated unit up here, keep those drinks close at hand. But it's those helm seats that really separate this from all others. So the sky helm you can stand up at, especially if you're doing close quarter manoeuvres. You can see here it's got the joystick next to the wheel. But you can also lower this, and it just feels like you're sitting not only in a sports boat, but on a sports car. Even the gauges and instrumentation makes it feel like you're sitting in a sports car. And I love the fact that it's got as much navigation equipment up here, so you can use this for cruising and not just for docking and close quarter manoeuvres. As much as she's a big boat, this could easily be handled by a husband and wife team if you wanted to. There's so much technology and equipment built into it, there's so many clever design features. You wouldn't necessarily have to have full professional crew on board to enjoy this one. As I make my way back through down the flybridge steps, I like how easy it is. I'm forward facing going down these steps, it doesn't feel like a ladder. And then when we do get to the bottom, you'll see on both the port and starboard side, there's easy access if you were against a pontoon or a harbour wall. And for walking around the deck, just look at how the shine and reflection you get off those windows. Look at the clear deck space, you got the solid handhold all the way through, it feels very safe and secure. And you want to give that comfort because the bow is as much of a feature as anywhere else on this yacht. You get a really good forward facing cockpit where you've got a sun pad and again you can lay this flat, you can have it propped up in sections like it is just now. You can see we've got an anchor and windlass up here and this can be operated from both helm stations as well as from the bow itself. And then when I pan round you just get that stunning stunning view of what this yacht can offer. And I love the fact that no matter where you are on the boat, there's so many seating options available. It feels like you're always going to have your friends and family close by. And with a yacht like this, everybody should be able to enjoy it. I also like the quality finish that you have on all the materials that you see on board. It doesn't matter if you're talking about the fiberglass, the deck, the stitching, whatever it is. Everything just seems to be to a very high standard. And it's certainly easy to see why this one was such a main attraction at the boat show. And the boat we're tied up next to is a Sunseeker Predator 55 EVO and I was fortunate enough to be able to get on that one as well. And although I didn't have time to get into the engine room, the hatch that you see on the deck leading aft, that is where the easiest access point is to get into the engine room if I had the time. As always I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on this one, if you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, if you can please hit the like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference for the channel. I'll leave a link to Sunseeker's website on the description, and as always I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.